everyone, it's at Adam Gota and at Matthew Sucre. Matt, another pay-per-view is upon us, which means it's time <laughs> for predictions. Yep. So let's roll right into it with our Hell in the Cell picks. Start off with the kickoff match that will be airing on the WWE Network as well as their YouTube channel. Chad Gable and Sheldon Benjamin, uh, America's Greatest Tag Team, uh, World's Greatest Alphas. What should we call them? I like... World greatest alphas. World greatest alphas. Cool. I like America's greatest tag team. <laughs> that's 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 my favorite. Uh, taking on the hype bros. Woo woo woo. You know it. Mojo Raleigh and Zack Ryder. Um, Matt, what what's your pick? Do they heal turn here? Uh, uh, I don't know. Um, it seems like it's like okay. New Day fight Usos over the tag tiles, and everyone else just kind of do whatever you want. But we are getting the return of the Fashion Files. That is apparently a thing that's pay-per-view worthy now. So um, there's that. That's what Breeze Dongo is doing right now. Which is fine. It, it adds their character. That's yeah. fine. Um, They're getting on TV. So. Exactly. Uh, it's better than the Ascensions doing. <laughs> I think maybe... Uh, I think Sheldon and Gable maybe win this one. And then we get like a full-on heel turn. Um, you're, you're probably right. In fact, I am 99% sure that you are right. But I'm still picking the Hype Bros because I love them. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's it. I just okay. love the Hype Bros too much, so I, I'm going to go with the Hype Bros. Uh, let's, <laughs> I know, it's dumb. It's such a bad thing. I mean, they have been, lately, WWE's been trying to be like, look, you have to watch the kickoff show because something's going to happen, yeah. so. You're probably right. Uh, Rusev and Randy Orton, a rematch from SummerSlam. I think they've done a pretty okay job of building this one. It hasn't, it's not the match I'm looking most forward to on the card. In fact, looking at the card, it's pretty low on the list. Um, but I, I will say this, they're two talented guys. They both know how to work. As for who wins, uh, you know what? The company seems to have kind of given up on Rusev, so I'm going to say... Randy Orton wins again. He's got to get his win back from uh, when Rusev beat him after his match with Aiden English on SmackDown. So I'm going to give it to the Viper. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> there we go. All right. I mean... Hey, listen. Unless you have anything I, else I do say. like Rusev's promos. It looks like he's trying a different character where he's kind of like... Trying to be funny. I don't know, because he's like... Uh, when I, after I beat though. you, it'll be Happy Rusev Day, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of funny. So, well, I that mean, along with Handsome Rusev, you know, he's that's right. He's, and let's not forget uh, South Park Regional Wrestling. Oh no, that should be his character. <laughs> he should be going back to his farming Bulgarian roots <laughs> and planting <laughs> some roots. Uh, right, yeah. And speaking of uh, roots. Yeah. I tried to force that stat and it didn't really work. Bobby Roode! Oh, okay. <laughs> Booby like, Roode. Booby Roode. Make his pay per view debut. Against uh, Dolph Ziggler, uh, Mr. Chameleon himself, Mr. Copycat, however you want to call him. Uh, what do you think of this match, Matt? I don't know, because if Ziggler loses, <laughs> like, what, what's been the point of doing all these problems, but if Bobby Roode loses, everyone's going to go, oh, they're burying another NXT guy coming up. <laughs> so, that That's great. so Ziggler's probably going to win by uh, I'll disagree with you. I think that Dolph Ziggler is in the position uh, that he should be in, which is making other guys look good, and that's what I think he plans on doing with Bobby Roode. Uh, I think they're going to have a great match, and I think it's going to be a nice big pay-per-view victory. For, uh, for the glorious one. And this is what I mean about how deep the SmackDown undercard is. I mean, these guys could be feuding over the U.S. title if they had anything creative to do. Speaking of the U.S. title, let's talk about AJ Styles versus Baron and Corbin. Um, I like this match. I like Baron Corbin. I know a lot of people don't, but I, I think there's a big upside to it. Uh, I just wish Ty Dillinger was part of the match. I really feel yeah. like the perfect 10 has been kind of left out unceremoniously. He's fought AJ this uh, this past month. He's been involved with Corbin. I, I don't see any reason to not put him in there as a triple threat. Uh, and I don't see him getting involved because that's not a very babyface thing to do. So, and, and you could protect all three guys if all three are involved a little least. I agree. So in my dreams, it's Ty Dillinger, and he's in the match, and he wins. <laughs> um... 
But for this one, I, I don't think we're going to see much change. So I think AJ Styles is going to retain. I'm saying that a little bit leery because I'm going very babyface he heavy in this first part. But I'm going to be a pretty heel heavy for the next part. I, so. I, I think AJ Styles wins as well. But it is interesting that you know they, they blew the title shot with Corbin in the, the cash-in. But they're giving him high profile spots still so maybe it was just a matter of we don't know how to get the title on to you but we don't but we still really like you a slow build is not a bad thing that's right certainly not. yeah uh, let's move on to the ladies of smackdown natalia versus charlotte flair which could steal the show depending on how much time they're given both yeah. these ladies incredibly talented this one is probably the toughest match for me to call. So I'm going to pass it over to you, Matt. Well, Natalia made Charlotte tap uh, a couple weeks ago or just the other week on SmackDown. So, uh, yeah, this is hard. Uh, I know it was because of interference that she tapped, but I don't know. Maybe Carmella and Ellsworth get involved again. And, I mean, they've done that quite a lot where they've, like, Right out of finish on SmackDown, and they go with a very similar finish at the pay per view. Um, I don't know, it feels like it's like, let's win this one for Rick. So, you know, that's a uh, good point. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Charlotte. Uh, but I won't be surprised if Natalia does win. I am gonna go with Natalia. I'm gonna say she retains, and I'm gonna say it'll, it will be through the fairy teams and probably through some cheating, which I'm hoping will lead to them having a bigger advertisement of Starcade, uh, where they will have their steel right. cage match, which I'm hoping will be the main event, and that's where I think we will get our, hey, this one's for Rick, it's in her hometown, it's in right. Charlotte, it's a cage, and it's Starcade. You couldn't pick a more perfect place for Charlotte to win the title. That's uh, where the hometown heat. No, let's hope in. not. I'm hoping not. <laughs> so that's why I'm saying Natalia because I think they're going to save it. For if start. Natalia wins, we riot. You're, you better believe there's going to be signs that say that there. <laughs> um, let's move on to the tag team division. The the match that I think I'm probably looking forward to the second most of the night, uh, and that's the New Day defending their uh, W. No, I'm not, not going to say you, You're good. You, you got a nice little... Nice little swivel to your hips. I'm too, I'm too big. If I do that, I'm going to knock you out of the frame. Uh, the WWE SmackDown Tag Team Championship against uh, the Usos. Uh, for me, it's pretty cut and dry. I think the Usos are going to win the titles back here. I think really? that, I do. I think the back and forth is, is good. And I think that this match is suited for the Usos. Um, I'm, I'm, if yeah, they if they if that. they lose, I'm, I'm fine with it. New Day's a great tag team, but I like the back and forth between these guys, and I honestly think that this is a match that suits the Usos. I think the, we have uh, they get the belts back. The Usos said something very interesting. I thought they kind of teased that it would be a multi-team match. They said. Not only can we beat you, but we can take every tag team. It's, I'm butchering it, but, you know, every tag team. We'll put every tag team in the cell and beat them, too. And I was like, that would be cool. That would be, like, what, a four or five team, you know, ten-man Hell in a Cell. I thought that that might have been chaotic. But we've seen that <laughs> with the least. TLC matches before. Maybe, I don't know, that would have given this a little bit of a different vibe to this year's Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. I think they've built it up enough that New Day and the Usos can yes. carry that, that stipulation on their own. I don't have an issue with that. Right. Um, so, but who do you think's going to walk out with I, I think the New Day are going to retain. Going to retain, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, moving on to the WWE Championship, Jinder Mahal taking on Shinsuke Nakamura. Just a regular old match for the uh, WWE Championship. Uh, Matt, who do you like in this one? I mean, I mean, we all know we don't like the, the racism angle that they've done recently. And we yeah. did promise on the podcast that we would uh, talk yeah. a little bit about that. So. I just don't understand. Why they feel they have to go there. Yeah. Uh, did you see the meme that someone did where they took the Krusty the Clown bit? No. From, okay, so you know in the episode of Krusty the Clown where he goes up to do the stand-up and it's not getting any laughs and then he does the really racist Miso Sali. <laughs> oh, yeah. He like it the fly to right lice. Okay, well, somebody took that and then took oh, the oh. audio of Jinder Mahal's promo and put it to that. The Krusty the Clown doing things and having the oh, crowd be dead. 
So yeah, it's uh, it's kind of the same thing, except while The Simpsons were doing it ironically, and to be funny about it, and to point out how outdated and out of touch that kind of stuff is, well, WWE was actually trying to make it work. So you know, it's disappointing. It's like they did something really good here by giving Jinder Mahal the championship and trying to you know ignite that billion person fan base I mean okay not all billion people in India watch wrestling I that in that. itself is a racist statement you're saying all Indians love wrestling but they're saying wrestling. look at the demographics um, you know that potential that we, market the potential market we could get into here and now let's kind of insult them by what we by not moving off this racist angle with gender and then also making him racist <laughs> towards another potentially massive market, and that's Japan. I mean, I know Japan has several of their own promotions, but, um, you know, when when you uh, hear WWE guys talk about when they go over to Japan, it's pretty huge. They sell at the Tokyo Dome when they do their shows there. They've got a big market there. Why are you insulting one of the crowning stars that have that has actually made an impact in North America. Or at least that, in that way. Yeah, I just... It's, you're better than that, WWE. Um, I know that's a that's kind of a stretch sometimes, but by now you should be better than that. It's it's stupid. Uh, so and who, it's unfortunate because these two, two could probably yeah, be doing something a lot better. Yeah. Even, even using the Singh Brothers, I think... It's, it, they're annoying to watch, and I get that they're supposed to be annoying because they're heels. It's just like, stop. It's a little unfortunate that the, it, the timing is really bad. Because yeah, this, no you could have made this a hell, one of the Hell in a Cell matches. Yep. And if they hadn't had the Punjabi prison match so recently, it right. would have made sense. Because the idea of keeping the Sin Brothers out, and it would have been fine. But, you know, sometimes timing is just the way it is. Right. So, do we see Shinsuke get the belt here? Nope. Yeah, you don't hinder the gender. I think that's kind of in the the the, uh, the motto since day one around here. <laughs> you don't hinder the gender. That's right. Um, I do think he's in it for the long haul. But you um, need to elevate the gender above this goofiness. Yeah, I agree. But that's the other thing. We keep comparing him to JBL, and JBL's character was pretty racist himself. You so know, that's a good point. Uh, oh, uh, God. So, hashtag is this racist? <laughs> then you let us know. Yeah. By the way, the answer is yes. Yes, <laughs> it is racist. It is. Uh, let's talk about two white guys in the main event then. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Kevin Owens uh, taking on Shane McMahon, the money, the guy we talked about ad nauseum on this week's episode, in a false count anywhere hell in a cell match. They had to make sure they specified that. What could that mean? Well, in, in my opinion, it means that the, the, the pinfall will probably happen on top of the cell or somewhere else. Yeah, um, yeah, that makes sense. You know, which... I don't know if they really needed that. Like, they did that in Triple H, because Jericho, where the pinfall was on top of the cell. So. That's right, they did. But, you know, WWE, sometimes they just change the rules whenever they feel like it. Yeah. Personally, I feel like... Somebody... I, I can't take credit for this. This was actually a, a theory produced by Drew Ferris. Uh, at Sir F Word, so we'll give a shout out. Does to he him. still watch wrestling? Yes, he does. I thought he just watches movies based on wrestling. <laughs> well, no, that's primary. Secondary. Uh, okay. it's, it's Great. First thing. Uh, he theorized, um, as we talked about it on the podcast uh, earlier, Kevin Owens may be headed back to Raw after this pay per view, which both I think you and I, I think it was a ridiculous move, as did Drew. But he did have a very good theory, which is that he. Kevin Owens is going to become bloodthirsty for McMahon blood. Uh, and so after taking out Vince and then Shane, he's going to go after Triple H, his mentor, uh, and maybe set something up for WrestleMania in New Orleans, which I could totally see happening. Uh, and because of that, I'm going to go with Kevin Owens as the winner. For the That's game. not bad. That would... Plus, I don't. I really don't want to see Shane McMahon. I don't want to see Shane McMahon win either. That's not a bad... Theory. I, I like the idea of Owens and Triple H um, I mean, being built out of this because that would give some light to this uh, this crap. I don't like it at all. Um, 
Hey, I, I don't mind, you know, fight for your family, and I don't mind when a heel is using the family angle to, to put a wrestler down and try to get himself over as a heel. Just do it with other wrestlers. Just do it with other wrestlers, and don't give a non-wrestler a marquee match like this. Uh, the main event spot. Yeah, so... Yeah, maybe we get a pop up power bomb on top of the cell, and that's that's where it from the helicopter. It. That's I'm telling you, from the helicopter. <laughs> that's right. Make it happen. Yeah, so Owens has to win. Well, there you have it. Or I'll be angry. <laughs> I will be so angry. You might have a foot through your new drywall when I come over and watch this. So we'll see. Uh, will we get a new U.S. champion? Will Shinsuke um, come out in a kimono and uh, be racist? Will Matthew Sucrum need to buy me a new television at the end of the night? There's only one way to find out, and that's to watch Hell in a Cell uh, on the WWE Network tonight. We did our best to try and, and keep these shorter than the other ones, but there's too much bile and too much rage. So until next time, a shorter video. Uh, I'm at Adam Kota. That's at Matthew Sucrum, and you know what to do. Watch, share, subscribe, repeat.